Hey robot makers, do you want to know how to do this in a Raspberry Pi terminal? Then keep watching. So let's have a look how we can install SynthShell. So first of all, we need to clone the Git repository. So we do git clone dash dash recursive and then that address there, github.com slash Andres Gongora, is that? slash synth-shell.git. So we're then going to add the execute permission to the synth shell setup program and then we're going to change into the synth shell directory. Next we're going to run the setup.sh program and that is going to install giving us lots of options. Then after that we can install some fonts. This is the powerline fonts. Uh, you need to install them on the host machine as well as the client so I'll show you what that means in a second. If we need to we can change the locale of the machine. The machine needs to be a UTF-8 locale for this to work. So let's go and try this uh, and see what this looks like. So I'm over here in a terminal. I'm going to log into my Twitcher Pi Raspberry Pi and we'll change some of the config there. So the first thing I'm going to do is just do SSH into the Raspberry Pi. And this is the part where it prompts me for a password. We can change this later on to have a much more interesting message. Well, let's just log in for now. Okay, we're now logged into our Twitcher Pi. So we can see there we've got the standard font, we've got the green text and the purple dollar sign. So what we're going to do is we're going to make that much more interesting by installing Synth Shell. So the first thing we need to do is we need to do git clone dash dash recursive and then https github.com slash Andres Gongora and then Synth Shell. Git. That's now going to download that to this Raspberry Pi. And it's really quick, it's only a couple of files. Okay, so it's downloaded the files that we need. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the, the execute permissions. We're going to do plus X, the setup shell. Then we're going to change into the synth shell directory, and then we're going to run that setup program. So this will ask us, it will prompt us for a couple of options. So do you want to install or uninstall the shell? We want to install it, and that's the default. So we just press return. Would you like to install it for the current user or system-wide? So I'm going to say just for the current user, which is the default. It's then asked, did I want to install the shell greeter? I didn't actually want to install that, but it's gone ahead and done that anyway. And then it says, do you want to install the synth shell prompt? Yes, that's definitely what I do want to install. Now, do I want to install better.ls? I'm not really interested in that or the alias or the better history. So next we need to make sure that we've got the powerline fonts installed. So let's do sudo apt install. Now these fonts are only being installed on the Raspberry Pi itself. So when we open up a new terminal window, it will choose this new font. When we attach from an SSH terminal from another machine, we need to make sure we have those those powerline fonts installed on that machine as well otherwise you'll get some weird characters showing okay so what we want to do now is log out and log back in and see if anything's changed so i've now logged into my raspberry pi you can see that i've now got a very different looking prompt there so as i change directories so if i go into the documents folder for example you can see now the path um, changes color let's have a look what else we've got in there we just create a little directory to go in you can see there the path changes color and it gives us a bit of a more interesting visual look to the terminal. So let's have a look what else we can do with this. So with synth shell we can actually change the colors. If we're not happy with that color scheme we can actually change it. So there's a whole different bunch in that file that's on the screen there. So inside the .config synth-shell synth-shell-prompt.config file. So inside that file you can see there's a whole bunch of different settings. We've got user, we've got host and we have the current working directory path. So we can see there the path to the working directory um, has got gray dark gray it's got white background and it's got a bold text effect you can see for the user it's white it's got a background of blue and it's currently bold so if you want to know what the colors are what the code is for those because you can have the word such as white or you can actually give it a value between 0 and 255 because it's a 256 um, color palette that you have on the terminal so we can actually put in a number like 130 and it will change the color so there is a lookup we can look up there's a lookup we can look up so on this website that I've just looked up here, if you just do a Google search for terminal colors, you'll find that there's a whole different range of colors that we can type in. So 130, for example, was that dark orange color. So we can use 130 and we'll get a dark orange prompt. If we wanted a, a green color, we could choose 70, for example. So let's try that. Let's go for 70. We go back to our, our terminal and then we go inside the .config folder. And then within there, we go into the synth shell folder. And then we can see that we've got the synth shell prompt.config so that's the file that we want to edit so if we do synth shell prompt.config and we go down there 
to the let's go for the user one so instead of that being a blue background let's change that to be 70 let's try 70 come out of that save the buffer and then let's log out and log back in to refresh that so i've logged in now and you can see that our username has now got that nice green color um, we haven't changed the, the name of the the path that we're currently in so we'd need to edit that color as well if we wanted that to be a nicer color so maybe we could change that to 40. so let's quickly change that to 34. so if we go to so the path was that slash dot config. Let's change the color of the host to be 30. Let's try that. We run bash, it'll load the settings that we've just changed. So just take a splash screen and now we can see we've got pie and we have the twitcher pie in a slightly different color over turquoise color. Okay, so that's the synth shell. Let's have a look what else we can do. So next, um, if we want to use this from another machine, say a Windows PC, a Linux machine or a, an Apple Mac, We'll need to make sure that we have the fonts installed on that machine as well. So if we do a git clone from a terminal on any of those platforms, go to github.com slash powerline slash fonts dot git and then do dash dash depth equals one. It'll then download the fonts package and there's loads of fonts in there. So the font that we're interested in is the one that's called hack. So we can open the hack folder once we've, we've downloaded that and then we can install each font that the machine is using on that Raspberry Pi. So let's just have a quick look how we do that. So if I open up a window and in there there's a folder that's called hack and then install inside hack there is a whole bunch of files uh, and each one is a different format of font so if we do that we can open it with font book on a mac if you double click on a windows machine you can do the same thing there and then you can then install that font just by clicking the button and it will install that onto your machine do that with all four files and then you'll have the hack fonts installed so then next what we need to do if we go to our terminal and i go to so on a Mac, um, I need to change the preferences so that the font that we're using is the right font. So currently I've got that set to, to hack regular. The default font for the Apple terminal is usually SF mono and we can change that to be hack and that will make it work with, with synth shell. So next up we have NeoFetch. Now this will display some statistics when you log into your Raspberry Pi and you'll be able to see all the different things such as the operating system, the host, the kernel version, how long it's been up for, packages that are installed, you've got the shell version, CPU, and um, how much memory the device has got as well and it displays on the left hand side some ascii art and we can actually configure that ourselves as well and we'll do that in a second but you might want to just keep the raspberry pi because it's quite nice so to install that we just do sudo apt install and then neo fetch so let's go and do that on our terminal now so i'll come across to our terminal let's do sudo apt install neo fetch and again this is quite a small program to install so it shouldn't take very long to download and then install Okay, so NeoFetch has finished installing. We can now run it just by typing in NeoFetch and you'll see the uh, the nice splash screen that you get there. So we've got the name of the device, the operating system version that's running Bullseye. This is a Raspberry Pi 0W revision 1.1. This is why it's a little bit slow. It's been running for seven days. You can see there it's running at one gigahertz. Okay, so we want to include that in our profile so that when we log in, it will display this just after the login has finished. So what we need to do is we need to edit our profile so we can do nano and then dollar home, which is the shortcut to our home folder slash dot profile and then we need to add an, a line to the very end of the file which is simply just neo fetch and it'll run that command at the end of the login process so let's go and do that now so if we do nano and then dot profile this is our profile you might never have seen this before and at the very end will be the program that runs so let's just type neo fetch the end of that save the file we log out and log back in so i've logged out i'm going to log back into the raspberry pi and we should see that new neo fetch command run straight after login so here we go it's going to run neo fetch there we go and we get that nice uh, snapshot of all the stats about our machine now we might want to change on the left hand side that ascii out to be something else we want this isn't actually part of neo fetch it's just a script that it looks for so we can change that ourselves so next we're going to change the ssh login so when we logged in before we simply got a password prompt we didn't get any other message before that so if we edit this ssh config file if we edit the ssh config file and point to the banner to be issues.net we can then add our own welcome message so when a user uses ssh to connect to our raspberry pi they'll get that issues.net text file displayed before they log in so let's edit that and we can see what that looks like so first of all we need to go back over to our raspberry pi and then let's edit that file so we do sudo and we do need to do sudo this time because it's a system file so in etc ssh and then sshd for daemon 
and config and then if we scroll down a little bit we will see in a minute one of the settings is the banner there we go and it says banner none so let's get rid of that and let's change that banner to be the etc issue.net and that's a file that we're going to create now so let's just save that sudo nano etc issue.net and then on there we can see that there is already the raspbian welcome message so we're going to add to that we're going to say welcome to and this one i'll say twitch pie because that's what this is okay so i'm going to save that and what we need to do now is just restart the ssh daemon so let's do that by doing sudo system control restart sshd and that will restart the ssh daemon okay if we now log out and log back in look what we now get as well as getting that raspbian message we get the welcome to twitch pie please only log in if you are authorized to do so and then the password prompt so now that we log in we'll then get the neofetch displaying all our statistics and this is making this a much more richer environment as well as the uh, synth shell as well at the bottom okay there's another message that we can display as well which is the message of the day so when you log in as a regular user it will also display the message of the day and this is in the etc motd file so let's go and have a see what's in that file now so if we do cat etc message of the day currently it just says debian programs blah 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 so we could create our own message of the day there if we wanted to so we just edit that let's do sudo nano and then etc message of the day we can add you been told let's save that and now if we log out again log back in we can see there we've got the you've been told you saw so that was the message of the day we're then using the uh, neofetch straight after that so that's kind of erasing that but that's where that lives now another really cool program i discovered on uh, freebsd is called fortune it's like a fortune cookie one of those little messages that you get inside the fortune cookie so to install this we do sudo apt install fortune and then we simply type the word fortune to get that message so we can also add that to our login to get a nice little fortune cookie message but we're going to do something even cooler than that first so let's go and install this go over to our raspberry pi sudo apt install fortune okay so let's now run fortune we just type in fortune to get a single fortune and you'll get some sort of pithy joke there what you call a wasp who doesn't work who doesn't work for his father isn't a lawyer and believes in social causes a failure let's run it again we'll get another random one okay so you'll get a random fortune each time you run this so we could just add this to the bottom of our profile or we can do something even cooler so let's go back over to our keynote and see what another plugin that we can install now cow say is one you might have seen before so cow say simply has a little ascii art picture of a cow and it will say a message that we pass to it so we can say fortune for example pipe that into cow say and then we, there's loads of different characters as well so there's one that's called tux which is a little linux penguin or we could just use the cow itself so let's install that and have a play let's get back over here let's do sudo apt install cow say and then we can put it all together and see what we we can create with that okay so at its simplest we can just say cow say and then pass it a message like hello and we get the little cow saying hello and we can make that as complicated as we want we could also make it pass a fortune so if we say fortune pipe that into cow say we'll now get one of those little sayings but inside that speech bubble with the cow now there are loads of different characters we before we had uh, tux let's have a look at tux saying a fortune you do all the work and the fat guy in the suit gets all the credit so if we do cow say dash and then vader there we go it's a cow with a strange looking helmet on we can try a completely different characters such as uh, hello kitty and there are some other ones as well some of them are better than others there's a stegosaurus one which is pretty cool there we go that's quite a cool one okay so what we can now do let's go back to our keynote let's put all this together we can do neofetch dash dash ascii and then in some speech marks dollar fortune cow say w tells cow say how wide a space to use and then it will sh make sure it shrinks and wraps the text to that space so let's try that there shall we so let's go back over to here and let's try that neo fetch and then dash dash ascii that's the american standard code for information interchange and then let's do fortune pipe that into cow say and then we'll have that as a width of 30 like so and we'll now get neo fetch with all our stats and we'll get a little picture at the side as well so there we go now some of them if they're a little bit too long can make it scroll off like that i think there's probably a setting to make this a little bit more friendly but there we go so that's really cool isn't it so we can pipe that we can have that neofetch dash dash ascii in our profile so when we log in we get a nice little message something fresh every time we log in as well as getting our vital statistics as well so let's do that so we'll, we'll just do nano and then our dot profile and then at the very bottom where we have neofetch we can just change that to be neo 
fetch dash dash ascii and then dollar fortune house a dash w30 like so and then when we log in we'll then get a new fresh fortune each time we log in let's try all that from from the beginning and see how that stacks up so we're going to log in we now get our new message that we've created to warn users that they're logging in or to remind us which machine we're actually logging into so if you've got a whole bunch of raspberry pies and you uh, you can't remember which one you're logging into it's quite useful to have that message there and then when we log in we've got our message of the day we've got our neo fetch and we've got that little fortune cookie message there on the left hand side said by Kause. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how to hack your terminal and make it a bit more useful and also a bit more fun. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.